before we wrap up the day, it's good to have a, a good summary uh, to also jog our minds and remind us what we discussed from when we started earlier in the afternoon. And to guide us through that, uh, we have with us uh, uh, Mr. Arun Sharma. Um, so I can see you there already. So Mr. Arun Sharma uh, works in the area of education and employment with a focus on young people from the African continent. Uh, he is also the co-founder of the 10 Academy, a program with a mission of enabling highly motivated young person to get a high impact career, currently focused on machine learning and artificial intelligence. And uh, uh, Mr. Arun is not new to PASET. He has been involved uh, uh, in this project since inception, since inception in uh, early 2016. So Mr. Arun Sharma, over to you for a summary of the day. Sorry, Arun, you're Sorry, muted. Sorry, I just muted. Okay, thank you, Bonfas. Um, so just a couple of minutes to summarize the day. I wanted to touch on the overall theme of the event or the pre-event, and it's African-led science, technology, and innovation for contributing to the sustainable development goals and for stimulating global development. During the introductory session, we heard from speakers covering key stakeholders from the RSF project, including ISIPI, UM6P, the World Bank, the PASAT Executive Board, the African Union, and the chair of the PASAT Governing Council. On our first uh, major session, we talked about building research capacity in Africa. And our first panel was on COVID as a catalyst for science, technology, and innovation and its response in Africa. And we, the panelists touched on a few different points. One of which was that the landscape for infectious disease detection, identification, and monitoring in Africa, it's changed since the Ebola outbreak. Um, and the COVID-19 pandemic, for the most part, found Africa ready to conduct the diagnosis and sequencing of the virus. We heard about the relevance of some of the research that was conducted in Africa with the example of the South African Centers for Infectious Diseases. We learned about the, the essential role that the universities played in solving community issues and to support development post COVID. And we learned about the role, the important programs uh, for ecosystem development, including youth that universities can play. There were some key recommendations that emerged, one of which is that Africa must invest in science, technology and innovation in line with STISA 2024 to have the Africa that we want. And in large part, uh, that's one of the focus areas for tomorrow's discussion and key recommendations for the RCIF network um, it's important to embed the RCF PhD students or scholars into well-defined communities of practice in, for them to have an additive value and for their capacity building to leapfrog um, and predefined research areas and topics um, that they could join and communities of practice that they could join could be very helpful. A recommendation was that at least 10% of apprentices have to be postdoctoral fellows to accelerate the research and ensure that research is impact oriented and that Africa must expand uh, the Arts of Scholars program. The number of scholars that we have right now are similar or lower than the number of individuals that are trained in the US uh, or Korea alone. We then had a keynote speech from uh, Jeffrey Siwo, where he started with a quick history of science and science started in ancient Egypt. He touched on the fact that Africa has always played an important but an underappreciated role in science and uh, in science that science has always had a diversity problem and science has become a costly and expensive enterprise. Uh, Jeffrey Sewell recommended his route for innovation for scientific progress, um, how you have to innovate under resource constraints. He recommended reframing issues into computable problems, that diversity and inclusion should be um, supported and highlighted, and science and technology must be made accessible and participatory. And the Dream of Malaria Hackathon was one example that he provided. And he emphasized not only uh, the role for collaboration and, clouds and crowdsourcing, as well as citizen science as ways ahead, but Africa as a future source for science. In the last panel, we touched on a number of points um, with a lot of different input. We heard about the important benefits of the sandwich program, using the examples of Korea and Morocco as international partner institutions, and the examples of a scholar and a, um, as well as a, 
a PhD supervisor in Senegal as an RSF host institution, we heard about examples from industry, from Nestle um, working across Africa and also from Japan covering food solutions as well as earthquake prevention. We heard comments from the Carnegie Corporation focused on the role of doctoral training, um, playing an important role in socialization as well as research skill building, and also the role of sandwich programs in promoting retention within African research institutions. And there was quite a quite some discussion around the focus of uh, the value of interaction and engagement and highlighting the essential role that PASET plays as an African-led program, an African-funded program, and an African government program. And tomorrow, the focus of the topic will be science funding in Africa. And so today, I think a lot of ground has been covered. A lot of important voices have been heard. And I believe that uh, it's an important contribution and the start of a discussion, which will continue tomorrow and will also continue as the um, further events in the PASET program move ahead. And we all look forward to uh, not only day two tomorrow, but the actual in-person event, which is meant to take place um, early in 2022. Thank you. Many thanks to you, uh, Mr. Arun Sharma, and uh, for that uh, very detailed summary of the day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this marks the end of day one of the RSIF pre-conference. And uh, on behalf of the entire ECPE team, the organizing team, um, and all the participants, uh, uh, moderators, rapporteurs, and uh, uh, panel members, we want to thank you for your participation and we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for day two. Otherwise, we take the opportunity to wish you a good evening for those who are on the Eastern side and another good evening for those in uh, East Africa and uh, a good rest of the day for those on the Western side. Bye-bye. In 2017, a new research and innovation university was inaugurated here in Morocco. Designed from the outset to be an ecosystem for innovation, research, and entrepreneurship. The first of its kind to be built in Africa. A next generation university with five founding principles. Promoting research, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Developing skills and knowledge. Bringing forth a new generation of competent leaders. Developing sustainable partnerships. Sharing the values of social responsibility and sustainable development. Attracting many of the best minds from Africa and across the world to its main campus here in Ben Gwir, 50 miles north of Marrakesh. Welcome to Mohammed VI Polytechnic University. Mohammed VI Polytechnic University has established a forward looking approach to research and education, fully focused on innovation, experimentation, and the pursuit of excellence. We have to innovate in the research and education. The learning by doing is the best way to do so. By starting by the experimentation is the right way to do education and research and English. PhD students and professors working together as part of a unique entrepreneurial culture. Developing research projects critical to helping Africa realize its potential. When we start the research, we started in small laboratories. And after that, if we want to scale up, we need full-scale laboratories. Those are our living labs. The key research facilities in the university are referred to as the living labs. The Green Energy Park, the mine of Ben Gwir, Safik Pub, Mazagan Urban Pole, Leung Blue Energy Park, are all platforms allowing experimentations in full-scale laboratory. The experimental farm tests new methods in agriculture and fertilization, using data from the soil as well as from plants. We have one experimental farm here in Morocco, 
We are working with a partner in uh, Ivory Coast to have one experimental farm there, and we are planning to have more than 10 in Sub-Saharan Africa. The innovation and entrepreneurship platform incubates innovative startups with a network of mentors and coaches. It's a facility that helps to strengthen ideas. This platform will enable the entrepreneurs to have access to the faculty, the students, to the living labs, and if needed, directly to OCP or industry. It's an ecosystem to foster more innovation and more entrepreneurship. The Department of Social Science, Humanities and also the Business School aims to contribute to better public policies in Africa and in Morocco. The essence of this department is to be very close to policymakers and be able to provide concrete answers, at the same time being anchored in the rigorous academic analysis and knowledge. If we want to tackle the challenges in education in Africa, we can't do it the classical way. So we have to develop a new offer and it is based on digital learning. The Digital Learning Lab develops digital modes of education enabled by the latest digital technologies, including massive open online courses that will widen the reach of education and knowledge. the university aims to bring forth a new generation of environmentally conscious, competent leaders, equipped with the right tools to address the continent's current and future challenges. We give scholarship for the best students that are living in remote areas, and I think this is another trademark of this university, which is trying to be socially inclusive, to give a chance to, uh, to everybody to succeed. As an international university, Mohammed VI Polytechnic University is connected to a global network of academic and research institutions. We have developed interesting partnerships with many uh, universities around the world that have the same vision, that are interested about the challenges of the Global South, and more particularly Morocco and Africa, and are seeing us as a strong, interesting partner being very close to the policymakers, populations in area, concrete answers, using science. I think that's how we are attracting the best students from all around the world, which have a strong interest into that vision and trying to make a difference in the society. The university also develops partnerships with public institutions and industry. Collaborations cover R&D, continuous education, and knowledge transfer. Revitalizing agriculture in Africa is a challenge not only for the people of Africa, but for the people of an ever-growing world. This is what underpins our vision and reflects our values of social responsibility and sustainable development. By bringing science and technology and humanities to the continent, by educating the next generation of African leaders is, for us, the right way to tackle those challenges. Mohammed VI Polytechnic University, nurturing today's talent, impacting tomorrow's Africa. Mm -hmm.